There's another reason. One day, when some of you young people have children, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. There is a love that you have for your children. A desire to protect them. I have a little six and a half year old, six and a half month old daughter named Rowan, and she's just beautiful. She took after her mom. I love going in in the morning and just watching her. I mean, my boys, you know, they all sleep in bear skins and everything, but my little girl, she's got like pink on and little soft things, and she's just so beautiful laying there. The greatest joy of my morning is to get up and walk over there and look at her. Not my boys. When they wake up, they, they, they smell like they've slept all night with a dead shrimp in their mouth. But she's different. She's just there, so pretty. What would happen if one morning I go in there and there's my daughter. The sheets are all soiled with filth and wrapped around her writhing is a filthy serpent that's already dug its fangs into her neck and she's dark and soiled and spotted the anger the pain that's why we don't entertain here this is not a game there is a serpent out there and those of you who are children of God, He wants to, to wrap His filth around you and soil you. And He wants to stick His things in you. And if we are men of God, we love the children of God. And it breaks our heart so we don't have time for silly dramas and smoke and dry ice and parties and laugh. We want to tell you there's a war going on and your life depends upon you following truth. Some of you will leave here and grow older and destroy your lives. Some of you will stand before God one day and be thrown in hell. This is the burden of a man of God. Not to make sure that you have self-esteem or that your checkbook book's balanced or you have your best life now. The great thing is this. Will you not only survive, but will you triumph in Christ? And to do that, you must give great concern for yourself, for your heart. Now, remember that I said purity of heart deals with a heart that is not mixed or alloyed. Let me put it this way. It has no competing loyalties. It has one King, and that is Jesus Christ, and one law, that is the Word of God. Now, one of the things that we must do... Well, first of all, let me talk about what God is doing. One of the things God does with a man when He saves him is He begins to destroy all the idols in his life. And that's from Ezekiel chapter 36, a new covenant promise. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness. I will destroy all your idols. If I were to have to take a life verse that most describes my life, it would be that. As I look back over 25 years, I see this. God sovereignly working to cleanse me from my filthiness and destroy all the idols in my life, no matter the cost. No matter the cost. As I often say, and you've probably heard, I, I have my bones aren't doing very well. They haven't been doing well since I was a teenager. I've got more metal in me than a Tonka truck. I'm breaking down all over the place. And I've got news for all the TV preachers. It's not the work of the devil. It's the work of God. Just breaking. Destroying. All that will not last in order to replace it with something else. So there is a real sense if you belong to God, what is He going to do? He is going to be constantly working to tear the idols out of your life so that He and He alone is King because He's the only one who can satisfy. The only one. 
But there's something that we should do also. We should be hard at work destroying all the competing loyalties in our heart. Listen to what Jesus says in this same chapter in verse 29 and 30. If your right eye makes you stumble, tear it out and throw it from you. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. If your right hand makes you stumble, cut it off and throw it from you. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. We must look at our lives. We must sit down and think, do I have competing loyalties in my heart? And if I do, I need to put them away. And not be apathetic or even timid, but do radical surgery on our own hearts. There are even good things that the Lord can give us that can become idols in our life that keep the Lord from reigning there. Let me give you a perfect example. Isaac was God's promise to Abraham. And what a wonderful promise. But it seems as though Isaac, the gift, started having too much importance possibly in the life of that old man. Radical surgery required. Abraham, take your son, your only son. Take him up on that mount. Slaughter him. When that old man came down with that knife, his heart was free. When he made that decision, God above all things, his heart was set free. And God stopped his hand. Do you want Him? We live in a generation that says you can have your cake and eat it too. But God says, no. God will bless you with so many good things and so many aspects of common grace. He will give you the desires of your heart so many times over as He has me. But at the same time, He will make sure to guard you so that those things do not become idols in your life. And you must be sure to guard you.